This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at practical uses of masks in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Hi, this is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll go through the basics of applying a mask to a clip. Let's start first by taking a look at what we can do with the mask, because that sets the scene for everything we're going to cover after that. There are three things we can do with the mask. We can select a portion of the frame and modify it. We can select a portion of the frame and make it invisible. Or we could select a portion of the frame and track the mask to move during playback. Maybe more than one of those. Well, here's an example. This is a scene from Edit Stock, and it's an interview of Vince McIntyre. And as we play it, wonderful face, lovely old barn of a house, but based upon how close the camera is to him, his hands are larger than his face, and his knee, well, let's just say his knee should not be the predominant part of the entire interview. I want to concentrate on his face. I could crop in, but for reasons of wanting to see the rest of the room, I don't want to do that. So what I do instead is I want to keep his face in focus and knock the rest of the image slightly out of focus so our eye is not drawn to the hot spot on his knee, our eye is drawn to his face. The easiest way to do that is to apply an effect. We'll go over to the effects panel and let's just search for a blur. And a really useful blur that I use all the time is in the blur and sharpen folder called Gaussian blur. We'll just drop Gaussian blur on. It's a high quality, high speed effect. And inside every effect, not just Gaussian blur, every effect are three masks. This allows us to create circles and ellipses, or ovals. This allows us to create rectangles. This allows us to draw a freehand mask. We're going to work with all three. I'm going to click on the circle. Notice the clip is selected. I click on the circle, and it automatically draws a circle mask that I can drag from the inside, anywhere I want inside the frame. Grab one of these controls, and I can stretch out the circle. This controls feathering. Feathering is, this is 100% masked, fading to 0% masked. This is sort of a, a blurring area, a shading from 100% to 0. That's controlled by that dot. Well, this is wonderful. Kind of, I guess. But I'd like to sort of not have a circle. So how do I get rid of the circle? Highlight the word mask and hit the big delete key. That's the one that's immediately above the return key. Let's try a rectangle. Now the cool thing about the rectangle, unlike a circle, is that these control dots, though they're very useful, don't change the size of the rectangle. I can rotate it. But in this case I'm going to grab a dot and drag it down to about here. And right about there. Keep this closer to his head. And now we'll squeeze this back a bit and just feather it just a little bit to make it look like we intended that to occur. And now we've got our mask set. Our mask is simply a selected area in which we do something. For instance, when the mask is contained inside the effect, what the mask allows us to do is to say, I'm going to control where it's blurry. I'm going to drag blurriness up. Huh. His face went blurry. Well, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to have everywhere except where his face goes blurry. So let's twirl down the mask, and this time we're going to check this checkbox called Inverted. Inverted allows me to switch between selecting that which is inside the mask or outside the mask. Now, while it would be nice to have him be that much in focus and the rest of the background out of focus, that does have what could best be called a artificial look. But <laughs> so we're perhaps a little aggressive on the blurriness part. Let's set it to something which is a bit more believable, which is, say, 18. And now when we play this back, yes, we see this, the fire going in the fireplace. Yes, we see his hands and his knee. I haven't changed the composition at all. But your eye goes to that which is in focus. And because the hands and the knee are out of focus, I can guarantee that the viewer is going to be concentrating on his face, not his out-of-focus hands or knee. 
Now, to be quite truthful, the eye goes to that which is moving first and in focus second, well, brighter second and in focus third. So we still have an issue where we're going to see these, but because it's out of focus and because we really want to look at somebody in the face, not their fingers, we've given this a nice softer look. Now, those of you who are being hypercritical will say, yeah, Larry, but look right here. That's in focus and that's out, and this is in focus and that's out. Well, if you're interviewee is that uncompelling on screen drop some b-roll in to cover it so there's points where even the mask can't help now this mask is built into every effect whether it's desaturation or pixelation or blurring or anything else all we have to do is select the circle mask or the polygon mask or the freehand mask and we can create a selected shape and have that effect applied just to the area in or outside of the mask this has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at the practical uses of masks inside Adobe Premiere Pro CC. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 244. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. Membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times every month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.